Okay, so you you know where he is. He's in the palace, which is next to the cathedral, mm -hmm. uh, and you're going towards the room where you know he is. How do you think you're feeling at that point? Charged up, psyched, totally psyched up. A lot of adrenaline pumping. I've been travelling for about three days, quite a long way from France. I mean, a combination of fatigue, fear, ex excitement, I suppose, mm -hmm. trepidation. Thomas Beckett, we are arresting you in the king's name. The murder of Thomas Beckett is one of the most dramatic stories in history. It's about two friends who became the most powerful men in the country. They quarreled. I gave you the job of Archbishop in order to improve relationships with the church. But since you've been in the job, things have gone from bad to worse. It resulted in the bloody death of one of them in a cathedral. <laughs> The details of this story will be told in film two. In this film, we shall look into the background of the story. We shall look at Henry's attempts to reform the law and how that brought him into conflict with the church. We shall also look at the other important relationship in Henry's life that ended in conflict with his wife. Eleanor of Aquitaine, one of the most remarkable women in history. Henry reigned nearly 850 years ago. There's a lot we don't know. The best we can do is piece things together from available sources. What sort of a man was he? Absolutely a man of action, definitely. Uh, tons of energy, always on the move. All of his business apparently was conducted on his feet. He never sat down to do anything. Um, so a big mass of energy that's seemingly being thrown out all the time. It's quite a kind of edgy energy, which I imagine was quite intimidating. Um, and he was 21 when he came to the throne, so a relatively young bloke. Physically? Physically um, powerfully built, probably quite short, um, ginger hair, big prominent eyes people talk about, bow-legged from doing so much hunting, which was his great passion, um, and, and, and covered in sores apparently from doing so much hunting, which might explain why he was always standing up. Must have been quite exhausting for the people around him. Yeah, I would imagine so. And I imagine also somebody with that much authority and that much power moving around all the time with this kind of frenetic energy. That must have been very intimidating as well. Henry was also notorious for changing his mind. If the king has said that he would remain in a place for a day, and especially if he has announced as much through the mouth of a herald, you can be sure that he will upset all plans by leaving early the next morning. Come on, let's move! Dog boy! Hey! Where's dog boy? Thus you will find men running every which way as if demented, beating pack mules, running carts into one another. In short, giving a lively impression of hell. Get out! I'm gonna to count to five. And if you're not here when I get to five, you know what's gonna happen, dog boy? One, two, three, four, 